You're new here. They're becoming more familiar every day. Hi. Morning. I didn't like to hoot. It's only ten past six. Yes, sorry, I... I slept in. Any chance of a cup? Oh, sorry, yes, come in. It's uh, milk, no sugar, right? Uh, I'll help myself. You get ready. There's a flap on. Oh, right, well, you know where everything is, anyway. Situation normal. Bloody Jack the Angman phones at 3 a.m. Sergeant Willis, meet at New Scotland Yard in 30 minutes. Spot a bother. What sort of bother? Message from the mix. Superintendent Slattery reckons the boys are under Tom Thumb. So where does that leave George? Up the creek without a bleeding paddle. Mm. We were at the jackpot last night. It's none of your bleeding business. Did you uh, bring anything? Yeah. Smith and Wesson, 357. You could heat that uh, on the fire. I prefer it cold. Uh, warm water's better for you. I know. On a day like this. Thanks all the same. I've got a, I've got a tea bag. Oh, have you now? That changes things. <laughs> That's neat. Where'd you get that? It's a parking ticket holder. Ah, oh, I've been parking the old Rolls Royce on the double yellow lines again, have we? Look, if you heat that, we can share the resulting brew. Professor, you got yourself a deal. Always leave one round out, yeah? Yes, it's safe shooting myself in the foot if it goes off accidentally. Very sensible. You know that's a Smith and Wesson? Yes. And I know that the chamber on this one revolves anti-clockwise, while the one on the Colt revolver of a similar design revolves in a clockwise direction. Do I win a cuddly toy? It's just that I've been looking through your card. You're overdue for a refresher. I could still drop you before you could move from that window. Think of the mess. You might break one of your only three teacups. <laughs> yes, well, you know what they say. Two's company. Yeah. Cheers. Where is George? God knows. Our best bet, I reckon, is to get up to Ringway and tab Tom Thumb. Word is he's coming off the Dublin plane. Well, it could be a bit tricky. Yeah. Where did you get that, Professor? Family heirloom, is it? Huh? Actually, I found it. Yeah, you raise a few bob on that, you know. I'm saving it up for a rainy day. Yeah. Could I have my tea bag back? Hmm? Ah. Ah. Sorry. You snore. I beg your pardon? You snore. Me? Preserve me from unseasonal and immoderate sleep. That's Dr. Samuel Johnson, isn't it? An educated man. Uh, and alert, even in sleep. You haven't been with us long, have you? Um, no, not with you, friend. You haven't yet resigned yourself to drowning irretrievably in this Sargossa Sea. <sighs> Doldrums of society. Detritus. Fluts. Wake, merry sound. Those eyes. They're too dull to belong to one of us. I can still see hope. Yeah, well, you're up a gum tree there, mate. If you can see hope in my tired old eyes, it you can see life on the moon. I was a teacher once. 
Yeah, I... I heard your story, Professor, from the others. What did they say about Agnes? Oh, uh, I paid little attention. Bastards! You, uh... You heard tell of another traveller, uh... Name of Tom Thumb. They're all bastards! What did they say about Agnes? Hmm? Oh, they were too far gone to make any sense. I could make nothing of it. Tom Thumb. Yeah, I just heard some other gentleman of the road talking about him. You took my tea bag. Well, I gave it back. You borrowed it. You offered. They're all bastards. Dublin job. Chummy is wearing a blue golfing windsheet over a brown jumper. Rust coloured trousers and brown shoes. And carrying a black Samsonite holdall. Yeah. Right. There he is. Right, let's go. Brant. Excuse me, sir. Have you just come off the Dublin plane? Yes, I have. Special branch. Sorry to inconvenience you, sir, but we have received information that a man we're interested in was on that plane. Would you come with us, please? Go and get the car. I'll sort it out with the branch. Right. The man who we're looking for is travelling under the name of Tobias. Oh, you got the wrong man. My name is Nilna. Just checking, sir. We're in out the old shoe leather. Have you any identification? What's the problem? Tedious, I know, sir. We'll soon leave you in peace. It's getting worse than the six counties. Blitz! What's the score? C-13. Show me Paul DeShuva. Jerry Fetch the governor. Right. You! Hold it. ID, lads. Finger and thumb left-handed. You know the score. explain what the hell you're doing on my patch. Sir, there's a body over there. There might soon be two. Now, spit it out, Sonny. What the hell were you up to?
Channel 12, sir. Airport CID. Thank you. Bambi here. Is he all right? Good. And how's our young lady? Yeah, she is that. Uh, look, I'm sorry, they're out of line not checking with you first. Now, can we take it that this office made formal contact with you this morning at start of play? <laughs> yeah, OK, my friend. Yeah, sure, I'll bring you a bottle. Right, I'll come up this afternoon. Cheers. Sir, this is Slattery on the line, C3 Dublin. Thank you. Carl, hello. This bloke, Tom Thumb, travelling under the name of Noonan, he's been got at, shot. No, he's dead, at the airport, which rather wastes four months of hard work. Look, can you hop on a plane and get over here? <laughs> Why can't the Garda pay? Okay, okay, we'll get an aeroplane voucher for you, but you'll have to travel British. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'll meet you at the airport, Ringway. Cheers. You moving on today, friend? You ask a lot of questions, don't you? If you don't ask, you never learn. What were you asking that old fella? Hmm? The professor? Ah, he lent me his tea bag, a sort of uh, family heirloom. You got a drink on you? Is Adam's ale friend from the spigot over there? I'm not sure if I like you, mister. Not sure if I'm bothered, chum. Well, maybe you should be. Flight BA940 to Zurich, due to the later one of the incoming aircraft. Come on, tourists. You know, that's what I love about you Scots. Not content with squatting on half our island, you then try to patronise us with some bastard Pictish argot. <laughs> How are you? It's good to see you. I'm fine, I'm fine, Carl. Listen, this is Sam Clegg. He's the head of airport CID. Don't I just know? How are you, Sam? He's looking after the prisoner, so I thought we'd better give him the gen about the dead body. Yeah. Would you like that, Sam? I would be overwhelmed. So Drugs asked my team for some help to keep this off away from certain prying eyes. We set up an undercover thing in the hope that we'd turn up a bit of dirt on Tom Thumb, deceased. And when Jack's team had worked out how he was treating the big boys, my lads in Dublin planned to confront Master Thumb and rub his nose in it. With what intention? Turning him? Just so. Tom could stay with a gang, only this time as a guard and informer, with full reports to Interpol. Or else we bubbled him to the boys. Charming lads, aren't we? <laughs> It's one of the biggest drug rings in Europe. They don't mess about. Quad rap demonstrandum. Looks like they got him anyway. Well now, Jack, and who exactly is this? Oh, Carl, don't do this to me. This is the fellow off the Dublin plane. Any chance of a switch? Two of my officers followed him from the minute of his arrival until his death. What was he wearing? Blue windcheater, brown trousers. He travelled under the name of Noonan. Passport, driving licence. Yeah, he's the same colouring and height as your man, but... Gentlemen, whoever this poor fellow is, he's not Tom Thumb. So it looks like a, the ball game is still running. Yeah. Only the rules have changed. I can't understand the Chief going completely underground without the slightest bit of backup. I know, after all his lectures on the subject. You know what he said when he saw the late D.I. Casey's body? Sorry, love. That was out of order. What did he say? A couple of months back. He was very upset. He looked at Casey's body, hands tied behind his back. Sonny says he played it too close to the chest. Something like that. 
Now he's playing the same game. Yeah. But if anyone can cope with it, it's George. I think he's more vulnerable than he looks, actually. The skipper? Well, he's a... he's a lonely man. Doesn't need to be. Maybe he does. Yeah. Now remember, we don't approach him. Just by turning up, he'll know there's a panic. Right. Let him clock us, then move on into the docks. He'll RV at the back of the old dock house. Have you ever done the old elbow squat? No, thank God. It's great. You don't have to wash for a month. Oh, Christ, do us a favour. Right, let's get started. Now, this gentleman is from C13 Dublin. Guard of Superintendent Slattery. Yeah, but no connection with the mounted force, right? Now, for some time, we've been cooperating with Dublin over an Irish drug connection with the Far East via Amsterdam and the UK. British Link involves couriers posing as tramps and winos. Code name for the Irish contact is Tom Thumb. Now, nobody knows his real name, but one or two of us in Dublin have had a glimpse of him, and we know a couple of his aliases, Noonan and Maguire. Detective Sergeant Bullman has been living rough among the dossers off and on for the past few months. He's managed to pinpoint a few of the couriers, pretending to be gentlemen of the road, pub waiters, etc. And he's also acquired evidence to prove that Tom Thumb is trying to work a fiddle against his employers in Dublin. Now, we were just about ready to confront Chummy with said evidence and give him the option of staying in place as a police informer... ..or turning him over to the tender mercy of his friends. Yeah. And everything was going well until 2300 last night, when C-13 Dublin got a whisper that as far as Tom Thumb is concerned, the ball is over the dike. Certain heavy elements are intent on his demise. Now, he was last reported boarding flight BA-845 from Dublin at 0825 today. But the suspect turned out to be a ringer. He's now been ID'd as an Irish small time, a name of a Dowd, who was persuaded somehow to double for Master T using the known alias Noonan. And at this end, he got blown away by two villains using Met's special branch ID. And, uh, Smith and Wesson? Yeah. 38. Now, Sergeant Willis witnessed the crime. One of the killers was arrested, the other one got away. And the prisoners refused to speak. But Mr. Slattery ID'd him as Seamus Patrick Malone, sometime Provo and a nasty monkey. Now, the real question is, where is Tom Thumb? Is he still in Dublin, or has he filtered quietly over here? There's another drop due soon, according to Bullman. And our friend Thumb is cool enough to try and make the pass ahead of his old team. Which leaves Sergeant Bullman in a very interesting situation. <laughs> Nothing? Nothing. I've done the area six bleeding times. Got stopped by the dock copper last time. Did you show out? Nah. I flashed in my council surveyor's brief. He was after. So, where's George? That, as the prince remarked, is the question. If he meets up with Tom Thumb without knowing what's He'll happened... He'll blow it. Yeah. Chummy will waste anyone and gets in his way. Yeah. Just imagine the boss starting his pitch with Tom Thumb already running for his life. Watch it, we're being clocked. Let's 
That's a beautiful piece of equipment, sir. Yeah. It's called a theodolite. Simpson and Webb, is it? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, Simpson and Webb, makers of theodolites and precision optical equipment since, uh, oh, 1832. Oh, yes. Uh, nice bit of kit. Down on our luck, are we, Pop? In my young days, Sivers didn't ask personal questions of their elders. Sorry, mate. You're dead right. Here. Have a snout. No, thank you. I, I gave it up and I left my last job. Very sensible. It'll kill you. So they say. But quicker than that, your imperfect cover could also prove fatal under certain circumstances, sir. Meaning? Simpson and Webb don't make the other lights. Well, well. What is this, Squire? An audition for Brain of Bleeding Britain? I'm not afraid to rattle my can in front of a couple of Rogers. Look, get lost, will you? I suppose that the name Tom Thumb isn't of any interest to you? What do you know about Tom Thumb? I'm inconvenienced by penury, sir. I'm desperate. I'd even sell my kith and kin, sir. Where is he? Could you spare the price of a tea? They take it when I'm asleep, you know. Ships, towers, domes, theatres and temples lie open to the fields and to the sky. The river glideth at his own sweet will. Dear God, for all that mighty heart is lying still. Welcome to Poet's Corner. Was that James Joyce? No, it's Wordsworth. He's on about the Thames. I was feeling homesick. I hear you've been looking for me. That's right. That can be terminal, mister. Well, I suppose it all depends. So what's the game? Well, I, I did have a proposition to put to your sunshine, but I, but I've got a feeling in my water that that time has long since passed. Well, your time has very nearly passed, mister. You've been working a scam, son. Bound to catch up with him in the end. Wordsworth. I could have sworn it was James Joyce. What made you choose all this? To, to hide among... Tramps. They come and they go. Die. Winter in the nick. Turn up here, there and everywhere. Who's ever surprised to see a tramp? Yeah. Also, they, they don't look. People don't look. Kiddies look. They stare. Yeah, but grown-ups don't. They're like clowns, you know. What? Grown-ups? Tramps. The ones that last. Not your winos or junkies or the expendable detritus of 35 years of urban streamlining. I mean your vocational hobo. Your traveller, friend. The gentleman of the road. Expendable detritus? Hey, haven't read Karl Marx, have you? No. The professor said it first. We all have nicknames, you see, and different gear, like clowns. Take me, Tom Thumb. Now, I'm a sinister figure. The rest stay clear of me, and the professor. Rosie with her pram load of bookends and wine corks. The Sandman from the West Country. We're a fraternity of derelicts, friend. And you? I've been watching you. You're not one of us. Neither are bleeding you. Wrong. Sure now I can slip into a decent jacket and get me duds out of the left luggage and a bath in a quiet hotel, a few bob in me pocket, then back to Dublin or Cork. And there it's Tom Thumb, the hard case. Thomas Thumb, alias this or that. You can fix up a box of 45 slugs, awful hard to come by. Perhaps some poor damned informer is shot from the back of a scooter. All front for Tommy Murphy's gang. Make a point of contact with Dutch Harry in the heroin trail from back alleys and waste lots. That's me. You've got your man. 
But I am one of them, you see. I'm not an outsider playing and being a traveler. It's exactly the other way round. Yeah, you're kidding yourself. If you like. What was your proposition? You have a great imagination, Tom. And you're a cautious man. But you're greedy. In a year of pickups, he must have skimmed the odd ounce till it comes to what? About two kilos. Now, on the street, that would make you a very rich man or a rich dosser or whatever you want to feel is the real Tom Thumb. Get to the point. The point is, old son, that you have a meet today with Dutch Harry. Oh, yes, I've done my homework. And also, you've advanced the time, which makes me think that you're suddenly coming unstuck. Mother of God, you're taking a chance. I'll tell you one thing, Tom. If you keep that meat, you're a dead man. Now, why should that be? Well, I guess, I'd say, because you've been rumbled. And maybe, just maybe, I can help you beat the rap. You see? I'm a copper, and I know a way out of this for you. Mr. Port, you've just saved your life. Leave this, would you, Sergeant? Yes, sir. I see from the notes that you've been completely silent. Also, that you've been violent since your arrest and reasonable force was needed to restrain you. I suppose that means that you'll allege at your trial that you're beaten up and tortured in police custody, eh? Well, dabs in the gun match yours. Also, we have a very nice forefinger and thumb on the cartridge cases from where you loaded them. Powder burns, eyewitness. So, it's all there, chum. The only thing is you won't tell us who you are. Impersonating a police officer, resisting arrest, plus murder. Well, now, this looks to me like a contract job. I mean, it's hardly political, is it? Would you like to see a lawyer, prisoner? You don't mind if I call you prisoner. You see, you clearly have the edge over us because you won't talk, so you're confident that we're all in the dark about you. Prisoner. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Come on. get away with it so long. How did you manage it? Ah, oh, Jesus, I got special scales made. Easiest thing in the world when Tommy Murphy says to me, you set up the contacts and find us a set of chemist scales. <laughs> well, you can get them made, you know. Drug racket scales that tell the lie Well, I'm blowed. Well, God bless you, sir. What's your name of him, may we ask? I'm George. God bless you, George. It would have been a sin against the Dalaric Digester if I had turned up such a gift. They'll kill you if they can. You know that, don't you? Oh, sure. Killing's a dawdle in this new civilization, George. Everybody's at it. You'd have killed me, wouldn't you? Of course. And now I'm to keep you alive. So you say. It's a funny old world. <laughs> That's a fact. Oh, yes, sir. I know we can't keep him here. Well, we're making arrangements to transfer him to Paddington Green as soon as our boss has finished chatting to him. Well, if all else fails, we'll put him... Right, sir. Cheers. 
Mobile, down Sector G, sir. Picked up this radio request from Sergeant Willis. Will you phone that number urgently? Thanks, sir. Yeah. Sorry, Gov, our PRs are a bit duff up here. All attempts to RV with Bullman negative. But a vagrant's given us some gen on you know who. Willis, it's vital, I repeat, vital, that George receives a complete update on this morning's occurrence and on the suspect's new circumstances. Well, namely, that half the underworld is gunning for it. Roger, Gov. Now, we were supposed to keep a meet with some wheels up here, but there's no bleeding sign. Right, Chief. Uh, maybe beef us up with some muscle, can do? Cheers. Shut up. Looks like George is in lumber. Come on. Come on. What is it? It should be here. Nondescript from TD, Paul. Plus some backup. Oh, dear. You can never find one when you want one. Over here, George. You gonna meet those blokes in here, then, are you? Thought you knew all about it, Copper. Oh, I know enough, Tom. Such as? Well, the heroin is brought in from different places on the continent to various points of entry in the UK. Aberdeen's favourite, followed by Stornoway Hull and the posh yachting crowd at Chichester, but that's under surveillance, and uh, Dutch Harry's got enough bent coppers in his pocket and they went to ease out gently. Oh, plus some bent TV blokes bring them in and expose film negative cans. And you place your order with a dosser called Jimmy from Leeds, who is in reality Walter James Macklin. Whose other activities, as far as we know, are social security frauds and child molesting. Ah, oh, well, it takes all sorts, George. Yeah, and you take the pass in any one of a different manner of ways. Sometimes in the company of dossers, sometimes on top of a bus in amusement arcades and cinemas. And the courier is always one of the same two men. Am I right? Sure now, George, you've been busy. I suppose half of Scotland Yard knows all this, do they? You're under the microscope, my old son, if that's what you're asking. So why have you been trying to make contact with me, George, instead of a stakeout and arrest situation? Well, I look at it like this, Tom. Reading the entrails without reference to my superiors or colleagues, I reckon that the wind of change is just about ready to blow you clean away. Because I've had me hand in the till, is that it? In a word, yes. And now you have a proposition to make. Master Thumb, I do believe you're clairvoyant. I haven't met a copper yet. Who isn't on the make? No, no. It's not that. You need somebody to watch your back, sunshine, while you take the pass, before Murphy's boys give you the old lead goodbye. What's the name of their enforcers? Malone and Smee, is it? That I can manage on my own. Tom Thumb's no fool, Georgie. So how will he get out of the country? He can't go underground. All the dossers in England are gonna be turned over once Murphy's boys start playing Hunt the Horse. How much are you gonna pick up this time? Four kilos, is it? So how can you help? My patience is running out. Simplicity itself. Where did you get the gun? Nothing to say. Oh, that's better. You'll find we appreciate a spot of cooperation. I'm going to make a complaint about you. Sir. What? I'm going to make a complaint about you, sir. Right. Shall we try again? Well, Mr. Malone, you would have complained anyway, wouldn't you? You old thugs. Aye, it's shocking, isn't it? Maybe they should start recruiting police officers from the Brownies. Your name's Malone. Seamus Dominic 14 Darien Terrace. Do you want a fag? Good stuff! 
Oh, well, I don't blame you for being brassed off. I mean, it's dead bad luck wasting Tom Thumb right in front of two detectives. I didn't waste nobody. Oh, my son, you were seen. Two pistol shots, one under the chin, one through the heart. Very nice, very professional. You'll do about 14 years. What does an accomplice get? I'm not with you. The bloke that's there when the... Crime. Yes. When the crime takes place, but doesn't actually... pull the trigger. What are you trying to tell me here? That the other fella did it? I'm asking. Oh, Jim. Jimmy, you are in no position to ask anything. You're a cheap killer, and you're going up those steps for a lifetime. And asking is something you're going to lose the knack of. You're going to be charged, pal, and then you can file your complaint. And if it's any consolation to you, I will probably lose a year's seniority, but you are going down for a wagon. I didn't kill him. Who did? It's me. First name. David. David's me. He shot Tom Thumb. I was only the stick man. Mm -hmm. I can't do a lever. Why did Smee shoot Tom Thumb? It's to do with drugs. There's a firm in Dublin. It's run by Tommy Murphy. Who was it at your place last night? I think I hear a motor. I suppose it's none of my business. No, well, I think we agreed on all that, didn't we? Yeah. Christ, you're not getting all sentimental, are you? We're on. Lots of flowers can wait. Roll on death and give us a crack at the angels. Well, I've listened to you, George. But I can't really see a place for you in my operation. I mean, look at the way you dress. Oh, yeah, I've met him on courses, but um, how come he's still a sergeant? Well, he's got form, you know. Little things on his confidential, but they uh, add up. Yeah, such as? Uh, well, once he threw his piece at a mirror. He threw his gun at a mirror? Yeah. Well, let's just drop it, shall we? Coffee? Yeah, no sugar. And, um, why... why did he do that? Well, that's George. He found two of our blokes. They were working undercover. Found them trussed up in this house, shot through their heads. He lost his school, I suppose. And he threw his gun at a mirror. Yeah, that's right. And that went against him on his, on his confidential report. I suppose Chummy had still been lurking in that house. Where's George going to be if he's thrown his piece away in a rage? Oh, Jesus, I find that hard to believe. I mean, does your force make no allowances for, for human fallibility, huh? Never. My God, don't let that kind of talk catch on. Come in here a minute. Zulu 5-5, five, five, Oscar 1-1, one, one, over. Oscar 1-1, one, one, go ahead, over. Nothing here, mate. Oscar 1-1, one, one, some sort of vagrant activity up by the old customs house. <laughs> Second, I'll we'll have a quick word. Afternoon. Remember us, do you? The uh, the surveyors from the old dock office. 
That bloke Tom Thumb. He wasn't where you said. Two quid. Two quid. Each. Done. Give them the bleed eight quid and let's get on with it. Right then. Huh. Well, what can I do for you? Tom Thumb. Uh, he went into the uh, warehouse at Taylor's Wharf with the mate. Yes, well, we looked there, but uh, there was a bedroll there, but he'd gone. Well, what about your friend? Will, will she know? She's no friend of mine. What do you buy? Come on. So there it is. Malone was stunned when he found out that Tom Thumb was not the murder victim. But you believe it was this man Smee who pulled the trigger? Oh, yeah. Malone's wetting himself at the thought of doing a life. Yeah, they're all big boys till it comes down to it. What's the position with press and radio? Well, P department has put it out that an Irishman by the name of Noonan was shot at the airport car park. So, Tommy Murphy might still be under the impression that his hitmen have taken Tom Thumb. Using the Noonan alias? Well, that's clearly Thumb's intention. That is a coup, I'm not mistaken. He cons poor young O'Dowd into putting on the Tom Thumb disguise kit, using Tom Thumb's blown alias, and then getting off the Dublin plane to be wasted by Tommy Murphy's hitman. How long can we keep it from the press? Well, hopefully, until George Bullman surfaces from this whole bugger's muddle. Yeah, if he does. I don't get much for his chances now that he's met up with Thomas Tom Esquire. That's the stuff, Georgie. Tie it up nice and neat now. So what's the plan, Tom? Just finish that and stuff it back in the cupboard. Where will you take the pass? Now, that would be telling. You don't really believe that you're a vagrant at heart, do you? Just tie the knot and hurry it up. In nervous, are we? You jest, friend. Look, you don't want to top me, do you? Topping a copper is bad news, even for the redoubtable Lord Tom Thumb. Topping anybody's bad news. Do you think I'm a homicidal maniac or something? Why have this on your conscience, then? Because it's survival time, mister. And you're the immediate obstacle. So that... So that there's nothing I can say. Just hurry it up. Don't dwell on it. It's just business, pal. Nothing personal. <laughs> You're bleeding it on your feet. Jesus, cover. You take living off him. Serious. Hey. Do you still want to take that pass? What's the game? Take the pass. I'll be your winger. Nobody notices a tramp. Remember? And then, uh, my lot will follow your contacts. We'll put you safely in Nick for a couple of years and we'll let you escape. New name, uh, yet another new name. Uh, plus maybe some... Come on, come on, come on, don't mess around. I'm Nick. You've done your job. Put in a good word, will you? Sure, Tom. Sure, I will. Help me out. Do you think I came up the Liffey on a one-wheel bike? On your feet! You've made a right be Jesus of me whistling flute. Yeah. Hey. Let's get on with it, shall we? 
and that he was yeah. convinced that no union members were involved. The man shot dead at Manchester Airport this morning has been named as Bernard Sean Noonan. He was shot at point blank range by two men posing as special branch officers. After a chase at the airport, one man was arrested and is being held in police custody. News just in states that the name Noonan was false, and the dead man has been identified by Irish police as Brendan Peter O'Dowd, an Irish labourer of no fixed abode. Brilliant. Whose side are they on? I don't give much for your man's chances now. Sir, Sergeant Norman on the by camera teams. Backup squad, stand by. Make off, David. The place is crawling with. Don't leave it. He's taking care of. Set. Sir, I witnessed a murder. I called on the suspect to stop. He fired on me, I fired back. You've got a beef. Tell it to the commissioner. You all right, girl? Yeah. I'm all right. Been stone time, Georgie. Did you get your man? Yeah. Tell me something, Tom. Make it quick, sir. This is awful sore. What's your real name? I know it's not Noonan or Maguire. Next of kin, Tom. Your real name, what is it? My name is Raziman Dias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty. What are you staring at? This is the bloody job! Oh. 